Hello everyone and welcome to another simple science video and in this video we will be introducing the mole as part of our study on stoichiometry which is basically the study of numerics and chemistry. In this video we will look at basic derivations of the idea of the mole and basic calculations involving moles. So at IGCSE level mole calculations are quite easy. right? And when you do progress towards your A-level studies, mole calculations will get exponentially harder. Exponentially harder up to your year 13 level. So it is very important that you're able to grasp the concept of mole and the concept of calculations using the idea of a mole and molar mass in order to uh, basically solve questions. All right. So in our universe, Materials and objects that we do encounter, well, in our lives, rather. So basically, like a, a water bottle or a piece of iron, well, you don't really encounter it, but let's take, for example, a piece of iron. Right? It is made up of atoms, of iron atoms. And you must realize that it is made up of a lot of atoms. To put some things into perspective, let's look at a regular glass of water. It's a regular glass of water will contain up to 7 times 10 to the 24 water molecules. That is 7 trillion trillion water molecules or 7 million billion billion molecules. That's a lot of molecules, right? So it is therefore very important that we must deal with these large numbers using much smaller numbers. So if you have um, looked forward towards Physics, just like how we quantize, quantize charge, like how we do not express, we do not commonly express very, very small charges, um, such as those of an electron, uh, lepton, uh, um, well, basically in those series of very small charges, they're much closer to the elementary charge level, we do not really express them in terms of coulombs. We express them in terms of elementary charge, and that gives us more simple integer numbers that we can use. All right? So just like how we quantify very large numbers, just such as how we quantify charge, uh, and uh, how we like to use large prefixes such as tera, giga, and mega, or kilo, followed by a standard unit such as the meter. So we have a tera meter, gives us 10, uh, 10, 10 to the 12 meters, or one gigameter gives us 10 to the 9. We use a mole as a unit to represent a very, very large number of atoms. All right? And the number of atoms in one mole is derived from the standard, the, the standard idea of carbon-12, where one mole of atoms will contain as many atoms as in exactly 12 grams of the substance of carbon-12. Right, so carbon twelve has a molar mass uh, is a relative atomic mass of twelve point zero 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 um, grams per mole. So one mole of atoms, therefore, will contain six point zero two. So basically, from derivations from experiments, six point zero two times ten to the twenty three atoms. And the man who did this derivation, who deduced this number is Emilius Avogadro, and therefore this number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which you should remember for your IGCSE exam, is known as the Avogadro constant. All right, moving on. Uh, it's very important to understand that, oh, uh, uh, previously, the man was Emilius Avogadro, if you were curious. I think I made a mistake there. So basically, the relative atomic mass and the molar mass of an element will tell us its mass per mole. I talked, uh, I did hint about this earlier. The mass per mole is basically basically how much a substance weighs if there was one mole of that substance. So basically, if that substance had 6.02 times 10 to the uh, 23 atoms of that certain element or certain compound. So what is that mass? Okay. So, for example, the relative atomic mass of magnesium is 24. Inside an atom of magnesium, there are uh, approximately there are 24 uh, nucleons. 
So one mole of magnesium will contain 24 grams based on the idea said above. Similarly, for oxygen, a substance that exists as diatomic molecule, so therefore its molar mass or its relative atomic mass existing in the universe will be 32 because it's diatomic. One mole of oxygen, gas, at standard conditions, will contain about 32 grams. All right. So sometimes we may be asked to calculate the total number of moles in a particular substance. Like, uh, say, in this example, how many moles of atoms are there in 115 grams of sodium? So basically, how many atoms are there in 115 grams of sodium in terms of moles? So the grand, the grand calculation that we must understand is that the number of moles is equal to the mass of the substance divided by the molar mass. So basically, you have your 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 the, the quantity that you're supposed to measure, that's the mass, you can use a, use a scale, and a standard value, which is the molar mass of a particular substance, like an atom. So in a simple, simple calculation here, let's look at um, 46 grams of sodium, we must, uh, so another example, 46 grams of sodium. So the total number of moles in 46 grams of sodium would be the mass of the substance, 46 grams, divided by the standard molar mass, which is 23, as it exists in the known universe. Therefore, the total number of moles is equal to 2 moles, right? So 46 grams of sodium, where uh, 1 mole will contain about 23 grams, so 2 moles. Another example would be, how many moles of atoms are there in 242 grams of carbon dioxide? So similar calculation, we take the mass of the substance divided by the standard molar mass. That will give us 5.5 moles. So that's a little bit more complex calculation in terms of um, our answer. But that's it. That's basically the mole in a nutshell. So the things we have to understand, take away from this video, is that elements in the universe exist as a large number of atoms. So therefore, we must be able to, just like in physics, we quantize charge. We use smaller numbers to basically understand understand what's going on. So all of the the idea of a mole is still based on the standard carbon 12. So one mole is equal to uh, the total number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. And we must know the Avogadro constant, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which is this number. And the grand calculation that we must always remember is that the mass of the substance, the mass of what we are measuring, divided by molar mass, or relative atomic mass, will give us the total number of moles, total number of atoms in terms of moles. Right? So thank you very much for watching my video. Please check my previous videos to make sure that you don't miss anything in your revision. And have a, uh, ha have a good time, guys. Study hard, and I wish you the best.